Today on Bleep and Jeep, we're going to take this ordinary open carrier and turn it into the cheapest locker ever. <laughs> so stay tuned. So there's a couple real quick things I want to go over before we weld this thing up and make our orb of traction, or what's more commonly known as the uh, Lincoln Locker. First thing is, is these are your side gears and these are your spider gears. You have two side gears that go on the sides of your axle where your axle shafts actually connect to, and then your spider gears on the top and bottom where your center pin goes through. Those turn inside your differential when you're taking a corner. So if you're taking a corner in a vehicle, your inside tire is going to have less rotations than your outside tire. And what this does is allows that to happen without any binding. When we weld this up, or if you put in a spool or a heavy actuating locker like a Detroit, then what happens is when you take that corner, one of those tires is either going to spin or drag. And it's going to make that barking sound when you hear a vehicle take a corner that has a, a, a solid locked rear end. You hear that, or whoop, whoop. And I'm going to redo that for you just so you understand. Whoop, whoop, whoop. And so that's the noise you get because your tires are no longer working separate of each other. They're working together as one solid unit, which is great for off-roading, great for solid, straightforward traction. Not so great if you're driving regularly to the mall. This is something that's super cheap, super awesome to do. I've done a bunch of these. I chose to do this because this is a Dana 60 carrier, super common. Uh, this Dana is the same as what you would see inside a Dana 27, a Dana 30, a Dana 35, a Dana 44, a Dana 60, an 8.8, .8, a Dana 70, a Dana 80. Any of those axles, if, if they have an open differential, you open up that carrier and this is exactly what's going to look like inside that differential. So that's why I went with this one. I guess the most common differential you're going to see. Let's go over a few quick steps we need to do before we weld it up. So the first thing I like to do when I have the diff cover off and all the oil out, or if I have the carrier out completely, is I like to give this thing a good dose with a brake clean, make sure I use non-chlorinated brake clean, and get everything cleaned up really, really good. Make sure all that oil's out of there, because you are going to be hitting it with fire. Then I like to hit it with air, and make sure I blow everything out and have it clean. Next thing I like to do is hit it with a little fire and there's two reasons for that one is I want to go ahead and tap it with the fire and make sure I'm not going to have a fireball ready before I'm welding on this thing with my face up near it secondly I want to get all the heat out because any place where it starts getting hot the oil is actually going to absorb out to that point and so I don't want oil contaminating my welds and thirdly, it's not a bad idea to go ahead and get this cast a little bit warmer, but that's really on the low end of my priority because when I weld, I like to weld the teeth together first, and by the time I get my teeth welded together on all four ends on both sides, then I flip it over to the other four sides, and at that point, it's actually warm enough, this cast is warm enough that I can weld the gears to the casting. You can see there was a little bit of brake clean left on the table. <laughs> so now that we got everything cleaned up, we know that it's dried out. We know that I've hit it with fire so that it's not going to blow up in my face when I hit it with an arc. And we are ready to go. There's a couple things you want to always make sure when you're doing this that you definitely don't have any gear oil or fluids anywhere near where you're welding which is kind of a no-brainer, but I've made that mistake and had a pan of gear oil on fire before. Secondly, is this will make a lot of splatter, so if your ring gear's on or your pinion's on, try to take a fiberglass blanket or something and wrap those up and protect them and, gov and cover them before you start welding, because you will get a lot of splatter coming off of these oiled up uh, side and spider gears.
This is going to be an actual Lincoln Locker. So there's a couple things to remember when you're welding these up. I like to make sure I got good penetration in the gears. I like to try to go through the gears all the way back to the other side. I like to make sure that I have a good weld between the gear and the carrier and the gear and the carrier. I normally even like to come in here and fill in these gaps that are open here between uh, gears and carriers. It's a big gap to fill, but if you turn your wire up a little bit and you got a good welder, then you can probably knock it out pretty fast. If you don't have a good solid welder, try to find a friend that does or go to somebody's house that does. I normally don't like to use the little 110 welders for this type of work because I don't think they get a good enough penetration between the gears and the gear and the carrier. I have in the past because once you've welded these up, this carrier is no longer good. It's committed to these to, the, to being a a Lincoln locker or an orbit traction. And in the past, I've seen people say take a plate and weld a plate in here, or you can just weld the gears right to the pin, your spider gears right to the center pin, and which is fine as long as you don't have a C clip axle. If you have a Dana 35 or an 8.8 .8 that's still a C clip, then you're going to need to be able to pull this center pin out if you ever have to change an axle shaft out. So I, if that's the case, then I definitely would not put a plate here and I definitely make sure I don't weld this pin up. Oh, hey, while I was thinking about it after I made the video, obviously, is if you have a heavy right foot or maybe you run little axle shafts and big tires, either way, if you break axle shafts, you definitely probably don't want to weld up that center pin or weld a plate in between the side and spider gears because my normal cases, when I've broken an axle shaft, I end up having to pull the opposite axle shaft out and take a long rod, pull the center pin out of the diff, and take a long rod and beat that broken stub out the other side. So if that's your problem, or if that's a case that you may have, then you definitely don't want to weld those up. Anyway, I'll let you get back to your regular scheduled Lincoln Locker program. But you definitely want all these points welded, doing it just here, just on the teeth, causes it to fracture because it doesn't have enough strength there usually on their bind and doing just the teeth to the to the carrier usually isn't enough because it allows play still in between these teeth so i like to get all those all those bases checked when i weld these up so that's literally all it takes to make a lincoln locker and make an orb attraction if, if there's a couple things I would just double check is if you welded inside the differential, which is the way I normally always do it, is make sure you didn't get any slag on your ring and pinion, make sure everything's cleaned up, make sure there isn't any loose metal pieces or pieces that can get loose, get those cleaned up, knocked off, use your uh, chisel hammer or anything like that to get all those pieces knocked off, and then bolt it back up, put some oil in it, and take it for a run. And now you're going to have the ultimate cheap locker. And it takes nothing but a little bit of your time, uh, a decent welder, some sealant, and some gear oil. And it's that good. So I'm not really sure why it's called a Lincoln Locker over being called a Miller Locker or an Esau Locker. Other than the, a lot of the old timers that would weld up their rear ends, it was more common to have a Lincoln DC welder. And I think that's where it got started was old guys with their rod going in there and just burning together the rear end. That's how I first learned how to do it. I think that's why Lincoln Locker stuck. The reality is, is it's just a welded together locker and you can use any any welder you want <laughs> to do it as long as it has a, a good penetration. You can get it at a high heat. I use 35 thousandths wire and a couple of things like that. So if this video helped you in any way, shape, or form for your rock crawler or your drag car or anything else that you wanted to lock up, please go ahead and give it a thumbs up. Leave me a comment below if you have any questions. I try to pay attention to these videos the first few weeks they've been up, so that way I can answer any questions or anything you have. Anyway, I'll see you guys next time.